Mr. Burns, again, this is our second to last vocabulary PowerPoint. I'm sure you're excited about that. That means the end of the year is, is upon us. Okay, so we're going to have two sets in economics. Uh, the first set is going to be more about the basic concepts, the characteristics of the United States economy, types of businesses. The second set um, we'll focus on later is going to be more about government's role in the economy, the global economy, and how, how our nation in, interacts in, in those markets. All right, so let's look at uh, due dates. Let's write the due date down. Uh, periods four and eight. Due date's going to be Wednesday, April 5th. That's the Wednesday before spring break. We'll have a quiz that day. Fourth quarter grade. Uh, periods one, three, and five. April 6th, Thursday, April 6th. Again, fourth quarter grade. Uh, we'll have a quiz on that day. Remember, you write in the definitions now, and then you complete your definition in colored picture visual columns on your own by the due dates. And uh, make sure you use unique pictures. Don't use the same ones that I used. All right. First word is 15 words in this set. First word is market. Okay, a market is where buyers, people going to buy something, and sellers, people selling something, interact in order to complete an exchange. You pay the price that is listed. Um, we're going to talk about supply and demand later uh, as you get into this, but if, if supply is, is high and the price is high, people will buy less. If the demand is up, suppliers don't want to sell as much there. They want to sell more when the price is high, so they'll reduce their stock, right? That's why on like Black Friday, you can only buy three or four TVs at that price, right? Once they sell out, they're not willing to sell anymore at that price, okay? But if you want it for full price, you can get as many TVs as you want for full price. All right, so that's a market. That's where they interact. It could be online, it could be in a store, it could be at a market, like a farmer's market, or it can, you know, something of that nature. Those are all different types of markets. All right, next word is scarcity. Scarcity is one of the most important words. It's what drives all economic decisions. So conditions where resources are limited, all resources are limited, they're not infinite. And it's that idea that you can't necessarily satisfy all your wants at the same time. So you have to make choices and then you have to give things up, which is called an opportunity cost. You make a choice, you give something up, maybe more than one thing. Uh, that scarcity, it's, it's what drives all economic decisions for all economies across the world. All right, next word is goods. Goods are products that are used, bought, or sold. Okay, it could be, it could be food, it could be clothing, it could be electronics. These are all different examples of goods. They're basically products. That's a synonym. Okay. Uh, fourth word, going down the first page, we have a service. Uh, it's an action performed in exchange for a payment. Go to a restaurant. It's a service provided. They cook the food for you. They bring the food out to you. As a result, you pay and you leave a tip for the waiter. That's a service. They're doing it for you. You cook your own food. You're not provide. You're you're not giving a service. If you go out to eat, you are giving a service is being provided for you. You pay for it in exchange for that uh, that service. All right. Next page. Equilibrium. You might have seen this word before, heard this word before, but it's basically that idea where two things meet. And we're going to talk about the equilibrium price, which is where supply, which is this line going down and up. Okay? So as price goes up, supply goes up. Demand, as price goes down, demand increases. Right? As price goes up, demand goes down. Where they meet in the middle is kind of that agreement between sellers and buyers as to what the price should be. It's always changing, it's always changing. All right, we have incentives. Uh, an incentive is a reason to do something. It's a motivational factor. It's, it's, it's gonna change economic behavior. So an example would be a sale. That's gonna change your economic behavior. All of a sudden, your favorite sneakers go on sale. Now you're gonna wanna buy them. Uh, and instead of buying paying full price, you can get 25% off or Whatever, you can get buy one, get one 50% off. So, you, you know, you and your sibling can get a, each get a pair, and then that way it's cheaper. Okay, incentive changes your behavior. All of a sudden now, you're going to buy something that you wouldn't have bought before if it was at full price. All right, next word is the private sector. Sector is a section. So it's the private sector is all businesses that are independently owned, separate from the government. So their job is to make a profit. That's private sector. 
most businesses in our country and most of our economy is run by the private sector. But then you have the public sector, which is the part of the economic system that's controlled by the government. So things like the police, things like schools, things like courts, things like hospitals. Right? And these all feed into the uh, economic system, our, our mixed economy that we're going to talk about later uh, in this unit. That's the public sector. Public, you got to think government, owned by the government. Private, owned by business, owned by individuals. All right, next page, we have the word profit. And profit is money that is made after all debt, after all expenses have been paid. Okay, so you, you pay off your loans, you pay off what you owe on the loans, you pay your bills, you pay your uh, workers. After you pay all that off, you, know, you pay your insurance, etc. then whatever's left over is your profit. All right, competition. Competition is a rivalry. It's a good synonym, and it's different. You know, sellers are trying to get consumers or buyers to buy their products. And how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to make theirs better than their opponents or at a lower price, or they're going to offer an incentive that can't be passed up, or they're going to offer a safer option or a improved option. There's a lot of different things that they can do, but a competition is where they're going against each other in the marketplace to, to sell products to you, the consumers. All right, sovereignty. You might have learned about this word with popular sovereignty last year or the year before in history. But sovereignty is freedom to make decisions. Just like popular sovereignty, uh, they declare that new territories should be sovereign to make their own decision on slavery. Well, in this case, sovereignty is consumers make decisions uh, by purchasing products that they want, by not purchasing products that they don't want. That's consumer sovereignty. Okay, so you're making decisions based on what you purchase, what goods you, you buy, what services you use. All right, entrepreneur. Bill Gates is an example here. A person who, remember, starts their own business, takes all the risk. They come up with an idea for a new business. Think Shark Tank when you think of entrepreneur. These are all examples of entrepreneurs. And will we watch Shark Tank later this year? Probably. Maybe during that SOL window, if we have a short class, we'll see. Uh, yeah, you can start a, a, any of the three structures that you see on the next page. A proprietorship, sole proprietorship. You are the only one that uh, owns the business. You can do a partnership with two or more people. Or you can do a corporation where it's, it's owned in stock. All right. So let's go to the last page for the last three. We have a proprietorship. Again, that's where one person comes up owns the whole business and takes all the risk, but they also make all the profit, right? And all the income comes their way. All right, we get all the profit, all the income. I should make this should be profit. Let's change that to profit. Okay. All right. And then you have a partnership where business is owned by two or more people. It can be three or four, that's still a partnership, okay? And they share in the risk, they share in the profits. So the good thing is there's not much risk here, but the bad thing is not as much profits, right? Not as much money that you're making yourself, you have to split it amongst your partners. But less of a risk might, might benefit someone. You also could have a partnership where it's like one person is the financial side of it and one person does the creative side, right? It kind of a nice balance there. And then our last word for, for today is a corporation. And a corporation, is it acts legally as one person, all right? And you can buy stock in this company. You can buy shares in this company, uh, like Starbucks as an example. Um, and you really determine how much you, you own by how much you invest. So the more stocks you own, the more shares you own, the more you invest, the more risk it is, but the more profits you can make. But you can also use this as a safe investment, just to you know, invest a little bit of money, make a little bit of money, or you can go through and make a lot of money. It's up to you with the corporation, and that's what's great. And some people don't like corporations because they think they're taking over our country. And some people like corporations because they're everywhere. So it just depends on your opinion. All right, so next step, you got the definitions written in. Now you got about two weeks to do the, uh, the vocab. We'll have a quiz that day, so make sure you review this. The quiz will be an e-card quiz. It'll be vo cover vocabulary and content, but this is very important that you understand this content. All right, Mr. Burns, signing off.